All right, so I want to take a moment to talk to you guys about something, uh, and in particular, something that the CIG marketing team is doing. And uh, it's a bit of a rant, but in a in a different way. I think we've ranted about the CIG marketing team a couple times just a few days ago about the way they uh, are handling the PTU Wave 1 situation where they're only allowing the current Evo Cadi player uh, backers and then subscribers and concierge only. The Wave 1 testers that can't afford to subscribe or be concierge are not able to be in there and testing. And you can kind of see the results of it with people just jumping in, grabbing the reclaimer, and doing nothing else. Nobody's playing Arena Commander, which is in the patch notes as um, a testing goal that, that the team is looking at. Um, so I think that was a really big mistake, and I hope they don't do that next time and learn from that. Um, but what I actually want to talk about today is what the marketing team is doing well. And what the marketing team is doing really well is something I just noticed and had a little bit of like an epiphany about. And what it is, is about some of the sales they've been doing and some of the differences that they've been doing. And one of the big changes is, if you haven't noticed, they've been doing like unique ship skins and these this weird promotion for green ships on St. Patty's Day. And, you know, some of them, you know, one of them happened to be the Phoenix, which was like a limited ship. And some people got sad about that. But like that stuff happens. There's a lot more people in the game and there should be more Phoenixes in game to balance it out. Right. So um, when CIG does something wrong, I think as a community, we should be constructively critical about them. When CIG does something right, I think we should praise them. and. I noticed something that I think they're doing right. And I think what they're doing is getting ahead of the curve here. So if you haven't noticed, they're doing some a lot of ship skins, like these exclusive things, um, and focusing on subscriptions. And we all know if I mean I think it's very obvious, and if you're not if you can't recognize that the team needs uh some money to continue the development of the game, I mean I think you're crazy. This is the most ambitious game we've ever seen attempted right so yes they've just hit 180 million dollars in funding that's a lot of money but the game's been in development for what five years six years now almost and we're going on six years i think they're in their sixth year so that money has been been uh gathered i guess is the best word over that period of time so you know when you think of it in terms of that is it really that much money and the, the big thing is, is I think what's happening is, is that they're actually preparing for in-game ship purchases. So once in-game ship purchases are in, people are going to be buying less ships. I think there's still going to be some sort of concept sales and, and ways for us to buy ships for, for uh, when we have the game. And as we've seen, uh, when a new patch comes out, things reset. So you're going to have to earn those ships again in-game. So people might be playing I mean me and board gamer on the redacted podcast had a discussion about this and board made a really great point. You play a ship, let's say it's a super hornet, you find out you love it, you've earned it in game and you find out I want this ship. Then you go and buy it, right? So it's actually like a decent marketing tool for them as well. But I think with them going with the the sale of the green ships, like this they're selling the same ships that we have in game but making them exclusive is a really interesting thing and a really thing a really cool thing that I um, that I think they're doing. And I think they're, they're doing a really great job with that. And they're, it just shows how kind of smart they are is to be ahead of it before it even happens. Like, okay, we have this community that loves these ships. They love exclusivity. They love being a special snowflake. So let's sell them these things because we need to continue to fund the game. But it doesn't hurt the game at all, right? It really doesn't hurt the game whatsoever in terms of gameplay when they're doing things like this, right? So I, I, just, I just wanted to really say and, and, and make this point and have this rant, uh, I guess, about this, because I think we're always so critical about them when they're wrong, but we're, we never 
uh, say anything good about them when they're when they're doing the right thing. And yeah, they're still making money off the game, and they're still making money off the backers, and the amount of gameplay in the game currently is limited. Like, people make that argument all the time, right? Um, but as we're seeing with... They're, they're hitting their marks on the the quarterly releases, and we're going to see iteration on the game, and I think that excuse is going to start going away pretty quickly. And I think with the community vote, I think they're telling us right away that, hey, we're not going to be able to hit every piece of the uh, of the pie for 3.2, so what do you guys want to see? And we'll work really hard to get those in for you. So I'm, I'm, I don't know. I just, I don't think marketing should dictate the game whatsoever. I think marketing should be dictated by what's happening in the game. And I think marketing dictated the game with the wave one testing right now uh, is what it seems like to me, where they decided that we should only have subscribers, concierge, and evocati when the wave one testers are not getting in, which I don't think is correct. I don't think that's right. Again, I hope they learn from that. But I think marketing is being dictated by where the game is going right now and i think that's really awesome so yeah um that is my rant on that and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it so um